Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem. Intersection of two arrays, we're given two integer arrays, nums1 and nums2, and we want to find the intersection of them. They don't really define what exactly that is in this problem, but basically it's elements that are common to both of the input lists. Now it's possible in this case, for example, we have duplicates, like we have two twos here and two twos here. But for the intersection, for the output, we do not consider duplicates. So the result must be unique. So this is a relatively straightforward problem. The hint is that since we don't want duplicates, the easiest thing we could do is put everything in the first set or the first list into a hash set and do the same thing with elements in the second list, put them into a separate hash set. And then at the end, we can check elements that are common to both of the hash sets and then include them in the output. So while that's definitely possible, we can actually also solve this problem with just a single hash set. Let me show you how we're going to do that. So suppose these are our two input arrays. Let's say we have a hash map and we're going to map every single element to a Boolean. So when we go through the first array, we have four. We're going to map four to a Boolean we're going to do false. So I'm just going to put the letter F here. And actually, I think I just realized we don't even need a hash map. We can probably just use a hash set. So I'm going to do that to make this even more simple. So now we don't have to worry about mapping these to anything, but we'll have four, we'll have nine, and then we'll have five. So we'll add every element in the first array to a hash set. Next, we want to go through the elements in the second array. Now we want to find common elements. Any element in this array that also shows up in the hash set. For example, first element is nine. This does show up in the hash set. That means it's common to both arrays. That means we should add it to the output. Next, we get to four, same thing. It's common to both arrays. Let's add that to the output. Now we get nine. So this is the part where we might end up with duplicates. So we wanna handle this pretty carefully. We don't want the same element to show up in the output twice, but how can we detect that? How can we know that we've already seen this before? Well. The first time we saw nine, we should remove it from the hash set. Same thing with four. When we see four, we see it's already in the hash set. That's great. We add it to the output. And at that point, we should remove it from the hash set. When we get to the second nine, we won't have any nines in here. So we'll skip this one. Then we'll get to eight. Eight doesn't show up here at all. And then we'll get to four. It has been removed. So the output in this case is just going to be nine, four. And that is the correct output for this example problem. So this is probably the most straightforward and efficient way to solve this problem. It's going to be linear time and linear space for the hash set. I guess it's worth mentioning that there probably is a sorting approach solution for this. In that case, we would not need extra memory. Well, depending on the sorting implementation, but that would be one way to optimize the space, but it's going to cost us when it comes to time. It's going to be n log n in terms of time. Okay, now let's code this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get that hash set that I talked about. We could manually instantiate it and then create it ourselves. It's pretty easy to do that for n in nums, and then we could say scene dot add n. So that would be going through nums1, but it's even easier if you're allowed to do this in an interview, which usually you will be allowed to because this is pretty simple. We can just pass nums1 into that and then get a hash set from those elements. And next, we can build our output result, which is what we're ultimately going to return. So I like to write that out at the beginning. And then to actually build it, let's go through every number in the second array, n in nums2. And if n is in the hash set, then it's common to both arrays, and therefore we should add it to the output, just like this. But let's not forget, we should also remove it from the hash set because we don't want to end up adding it multiple times. So here, let's say scene.remove n. And let's go ahead and run this code because this is actually it. And as you can see on the left, it's pretty efficient. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.